Thanks very much, Phil. Uh, thanks for this opportunity. I really appreciate appreciate it. I actually feel a little bit like I'm, I'm on Talkback Radio. Like I've been a long time listener, first time caller, been a big fan of the um, UKent digital digital webinars for some time. So I'm really happy to to be a part of it and to contribute. Just a little bit of background, a little bit of context to my discussion. I'm a teaching scholar at Southern Cross University in Australia. And for anybody who's not familiar with Southern Cross, I imagine there's maybe a few people. Uh, we're basically a regional university. So a mid-size, uh, young, we're only established in the mid 1990s and we're regional. Our main campus is based in Lismore, which is in the Northeast corner of New South Wales. Uh, the campus I'm located at is on the Gold Coast, so right on the border of Queensland and New South Wales, right across from the beach. And I don't mean to um, annoy anybody, but this is our campus location. Uh, so on the East Coast, I don't, unfortunately don't have an office that looks at the, the, the beach and the, the whales going by. I'm on the other side. I look at an airport and I get to watch people arrive and leave the Gold Coast and head to Fiji and Bali and wish that I was joining them most of the times. Okay, so Southern Cross University, like I said, is a, a, a young university. And in recent times, we've gone through a substantial change. So we've moved from uh, what was a traditional delivery structure schedule, which was three sessions, three semesters a year of approximately 13, 15 weeks in duration. Uh, in 2020, university management made the decision to go with uh, a block model. And that's, um, I guess, off the back of the success or the reported success of Victoria University down in Melbourne and their introduction of the block model. And in the chat area, I've given a link to a, a conversation um, article about VU's block model, which I think uh, many of you will be interested in. So have a read of that. Southern Cross has adopted a, a slightly different block model. Ours is six week long, so six terms uh, of six weeks throughout the year. So it's very condensed, it's very intense. Um, there's basically a six week teaching period followed by two weeks of um, assessment, finalisation and grade processing. So that's what we were tasked with in 2021 is, is converting our traditional units, subjects, courses into this block model of teaching. And it wasn't just simply about reducing content or squashing everything down into six weeks. It really was about taking a fresh approach, uh, a new perspective to how we would deliver our content, how we would interact with students and importantly, how we would try and achieve this the engagement necessary to keep students on track, but also not to overstress them, not to overburden them. And I, I mentioned the, the focus on students, but I since have learnt throughout this process that an, an equally important focus was uh, on not overburdening instructors and teachers and developing a unit design that took their needs and their time limits into account. OK, so. Uh, another article that I've, I've shared with everybody in the chat area, uh, I don't want to go into the block model too much, but colleagues ha uh, have written a, an article explaining the rationale behind the university going towards this block model and the papers there if you're interested in reading it. OK, so in terms of transitioning my unit, and I teach in the MBA, I teach a unit um, organisational behaviour. The university provided a lot of guidance and a lot of support for academics in, in undertaking this huge task. And in terms of the assessment design, they came up with these six principles. And while I tried to follow, or I did follow all six principles, there were three in particular that I really wanted to focus on. And those were academic integrity, manageability, and authentic authenticity. So with academic integrity, I don't know if Southern Cross um, has any greater challenge or, or issue with um, academic integrity than other universities, but it's something that 
I and my colleagues take very seriously and the, the university is very serious about as well. So that was a, a, a major focus when redesigning an assessment task for my unit. The manage, manageability issue, as I mentioned before, it's important to uh, think about the way that students would manage their study workload and incorporate their assignment development tasks as part of that and not overburden them. And then there was the authenticity uh, issue. And that was really important, I, I thought, for achieving engagement or high levels of engagement with students. And I know there's a lot of different definitions of authenticity. authenticity. I, I stuck with the, the, the traditional view, which was about it being a, a real world, uh, practical type activity. And again, I've got a link in the chat area to a, an article written by Jan MacArthur, um, and it provides some really interesting insights into different ways of viewing authentic assignments. And one of the, the I guess, the, the key outcomes that I took from her paper was this issue about authentic assignments being intrinsically rewarding. So uh, there's a lot of other detail in the paper, and in fact, I've, I've read it five or six times and I'm still picking things up about it, so it's very in depth, but that was just one of the aspects that I tried to take on board when redesigning uh, the assessment task. Okay, so in terms of the assessment task, it was the third of three in this six week period, six week term. So it's the, the third one, it's a period where students, they've done a lot already, they're starting to burn out a little bit, they're starting to really look forward to the end of the, the, the term and taking a little bit of a break. So I needed a task that was a little bit different to the two written tasks that came beforehand. I think if I tried the third written task, I would have been crucified by students and also the, the markers that are attached to the unit. So I wanted to come up with something a little bit different and I came up with this presentation idea. So I focused on the learning outcomes. Uh, what was it that I wanted students to demonstrate in terms of their understanding and their ability to apply the information or the knowledge? had a 30% weighting, which is substantial, but not overly so. And I came across a voice thread. So I'm not really sure, I can't really remember how I became aware of it, because at the time it hadn't been used in the university before. But as the, the description says there, it's an asynchronous uh, technique. And it's one where, that allows students basically to video themselves making a presentation. And then I can go in as the instructor or, or a marker, can go into that same site and provide a video presentation for feedback. And I really felt that it worked really well. It, it provided an opportunity for one-on-one -on -one engagement with students, even though it was in an asynchronous format, it was still very valuable. So just quickly, the key thing that I liked about VoiceThread, it was totally integrated into Blackboard. So Here's an image of my Blackboard site. Uh, if, you, if I were to go to the Build Content drop-down menu, there would be an option there for VoiceThread. And there's lots of different, or there's a variety of ways that you can use VoiceThread. One of them is for assignments. It did take me a little bit of time to get used to uh, the setup for it, but once I've, I've done it, I'm pretty clear, and it's not a huge task to get it all organised. There's the VoiceThread link that student, it'll take students straight to the page, the VoiceThread platform. And one of the, the smarter things that I did was I put a video together um, to show students exa exactly what they needed to do, to do. So I changed my uh, Blackboard settings from instructor view to student view, and I went through the process. I clicked on that assessment three VoiceThread link, went to the platform, loaded some PDF slides, uh, showed the, the menu option with the webcam um, option to bring it up and presented for a little bit. And I just made it really, really clear to students exactly what they needed to do, to do. And I think that was a hit because it took away the fear. It took away that, that fear of the technology or the apprehension of using technology. And most students had no problems using it at all. Okay, um, this is the actual platform. So the student has loaded a slide, it's got the black background, it doesn't have to look like this. Webcam up in the top left hand corner and 
if I was to look at the platform and click play, I would listen, I would see their presentation. So they're pitching themselves and what they're doing is I gave them a case study. I developed a case study, a scenario, typical organisational uh, situation where they're being asked to demonstrate their ability to lead a group in some way and to manage the change process. So I was asking students to put themselves forward as a candidate for uh, the person responsible for that role. So they go through the presentation. Once they're done, I can go into the system and I, I record my feedback. And I found that personally really interesting. It was a different type of skill set required to assess this work. So the novelty of it was really interesting. It was different than, than obviously reading text, reading an essay, whatever it might be, a report. And it, it, it provided both for both student and markers a little bit of a different, um, I guess, I don't want to use the word novelty, um, but it was something different. And it provided us a, a different opportunity to engage with students in this way. Um, so in terms of those three principles of, of, of assessment design that I, I wanted to, fo to focus on, I, I tried to identify how I had achieved that. I won't talk through them. I'll let you guys read through it, but I, I do think it was very um, effective. I achieved what I wanted to achieve, particularly in regards to the manageability side of things where students, um, they weren't required to undertake an extensive amount of extra time on top of their studies to, to undertake this task. It's almost like they could undertake it in, in concert with studying the, the topic content. But equally important from an instructor's point of view, uh, the fact that v, uh, VoiceThread was integrated into B, uh, Blackboard, I imagine it's the same with Moodle. It was really easy to set up and the marking process felt less of a burden. We were less cognitively taxed when assessing the work. And most people, most markers have reported back to me that they've really enjoyed the, the interaction with the student. Again, even though it's in an asynchronous format. OK, so just some comments that students provided. I put a, a survey out uh, the first time I tried this just to get students uh, feedback, their reaction to it. And a response rate was about 25, 30 percent. All but one or two students were positive about the use of this assignment and the use of VoiceThread. And they also expressed, uh, I guess, that that interest factor in terms of doing something a little bit different doing something that was very practical based, very real world based, and that opportunity to, to interact, as I said, with um, the marker, with the assessors. There's one point there I, I forgot to mention as I was going through it, is this issue about engagement. Uh, since doing this assignment, it's really uh, impressed upon me the importance of having this constructive alignment so with the unit content, with the activities that we do in our sessions, uh, whether that's in the study guide that students do by themselves or they do as, as part of the online sessions during the week, and then leading into the assignments, all of that, I, I think the more it can be integrated, the more engagement you will, we will receive and the more effective it is in terms of a learning outcome. And again, I go back to those, those principles that I tried to follow, particularly with authenticity um, and, and achieving um, was the, the in, internal motivation that uh, the article spoke to. Uh, focusing on that, I think, really helped to achieve this strong outcome or an effective outcome. OK, so last couple of comments on the slide there. And Phil, I know I've gone over time. Sorry about that, but that's me. Thank you so much, Patrick. Um, that was really good, really interesting. Um, unfortunately, we probably won't have time for questions today, but what I was going to say, if, if it's OK with you, Patrick, if um, if people do have questions, obviously you can post them in the chat um, and if we can cover them, we will. Um, if we can't, what we'll do is we will send them over to Patrick and Patrick has kindly um, agreed to, to go through those questions. He's kind of looking forward to to hearing from everyone um, about his presentation. So, yeah, thank you so much, Patrick. It's really nice to have um, 
presenters from all over the world and I think it's, we always kind of enjoy having people on from Australia and I have to say I am very jealous of uh, of where your office is right next to the beach um, so yeah um, what a great place to work but yeah thank you so much for taking the time to be here today thank you my, my pleasure thanks a lot Phil